Okay, this is Tanner Crackle's final project for photographing physics. Uh, we're going to start with my week one upload. It was, I titled it Golden Hour. Um, usually Golden Hour refers to the time of evening where the sun is just right as it is setting. Uh, this allows for generally beautiful pictures no matter what the circumstance or what you're taking the picture of um, so this isn't exactly the golden hour but uh, I still consider it that because taking this picture it was getting close to sunset um, and the waves just looked perfect with the chair and the umbrella was just all it was all contrasted perfect with the skylight that was still light enough to be seen um, <clears throat> so that's uh, basically why I decided to name it that um, I'd like to talk about the time of day and the waves, the position of the earth, um, affects how the waves move. This creates high tide and low tide. High tide is generally in the morning where low tide is in the evening. So, uh, week two, I did reflections, uh, again, using the same set up as before the ocean this was actually sunrise i believe this was 6 14 in the morning when i took this picture um the direct reflection was due to where the sun was when it rose up uh it was a direct reflection reflection onto the ocean itself and even onto the sand where the water just receded from um and another thing i thought was interesting taking this picture was the cloud deck down below uh, I thought that was interesting because that's something you don't normally see. Usually the sun would rise from down here and you would see it as soon as it comes over the horizon. But not in this case. It had to, We had to wait a little extra for it to come over the cloud deck. So I thought that was pretty cool too. Um, Moving on to week three, this is reflection and lighting, refraction and lighting, excuse me. <clears throat> um, for this one, obviously, it was downtown Pittsburgh at Point State Park, uh, facing Heinz Field. A um, couple of the highlights here were the uh, lighting. In this case, the fountain is lit was pre-lit with blue lighting when I took this picture. So that gives the entire fountain array of water and every droplet that is in the air a blue effect. Um, also the way it is lit in the foreground with the blue lighting and also in the background with the Heinz Field logo explains why the ducks in the foreground, extreme foreground, are silhouetted. Uh, so I thought that was pretty interesting as well. I like this shot uh, the most. I went down shooting Pittsburgh this night. Uh, got a lot of nice shots and this was probably one of the highlights. Um, so now to actual week four, I did uh, title this one Time Zones. And this was an evening sunset picture of the UPMC Event Center probably about a month ago. Uh, maybe a little more, a little less. Um, right at sunset, the sun had just uh, went down below the Event Center. And what brought my attention to this is actually where I was born and raised. I was born and raised in Colorado, out in the Midwest. And I still had family growing up in central Pennsylvania. So the uh, time change and time zone is something I've been familiar with for a long time. And I've always found it really, really interesting that the time zones across the country are so different. Um, yeah, that's, that, that's what I really find interesting, how it can be 8 o'clock on the East Coast and 5 o'clock on the West Coast. And then even more extreme than that, out in Hawaii, it's like a five-hour time difference, I believe. Um, so that being said, uh, I think when I posted this discussion on Blackboard, I had mentioned when I flew from Denver to Pittsburgh, I left Denver around 5 in the evening, and flying east uh, was, was running into the darkness. And it was just so cool to see the... Um, to see us flying from sunset into black 
because it was night by the time we got on the east coast so that was that was really interesting cool i really enjoyed that and that's kind of why i decided to use that for this week's Uh, week five, I did a fog theme. This was when I was out shooting one morning uh, at sun. Got a couple of sunrise pictures, but the fog obviously hindered that. Um, so I just started shooting some various playgrounds at the park I was at. Um, this picture kind of just happened. I just thought, hey, that'd be a that'd be a nice, interesting shot. Um, you can see the fog in the background. Um, the fog is actually really interesting. It's basically just a level of clouds that have made their way down to Earth's surface. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, and then moisture in the air and the temperature in the air will dictate if they how long the fog stays or if it will secede and uh, lift. I know the other morning we had a really foggy morning. I think it was Tuesday morning. It was like foggy, at least where I was at. Uh, it was foggy until like 8 or 9 o'clock in the morning before it finally cleared up. So I thought that was interesting as well. Uh, week 6, uh, this was the macro week, I believe. I did a leaf that I also caught the same morning as the last photo with the fog. Uh, as you can see, the leaf is a different color. And I believe I touched on how the pigments... In the leaf go from green to yellow to brownish red like that depending on the seasons uh, I also touched on the water on the leaf due to the morning dew uh, and I kind of explained that in a little more in detail I like this picture too as a macro shot I think this is one of my highlights because it's simplistic yet extremely just detail you can get a lot out of it um, so for my week seven I did the moon. Um, kind of wanted to throw this one in there. I've never been good at shooting moon photography. Uh, so I figured I'd give this a couple of shots. And I actually was able to pull one off. Um, so I thought that was interesting. And I wanted to kind of go into detail on why uh, the moon looks the way it does. And that basically just tracks back to the asteroids and everything that have hit the moon. Um, and the reason they can, you can still see them are because there are no, there's no wind out where the moon is. So I think in my discussion post, I mentioned that the footprints, the first man on the moon, Neil Armstrong have left when he was there are still there and will always be there because the fact that there's no wind, there's nothing to disturb the asteroids or the footprints in this case. So they will always be there. So for this week, I decided to uh, dive into another picture I took when I was downtown that night shooting. Um, this is obviously the PNC Park uh, sign uh, from across the river. Um, there's a couple of things I wanted to talk about with this. First off, the lighting. Um, come, going back to what I said in my week two with lighting and reflecting and refracting. You can see that right here, the... Uh, PNC Park sign is uh, reflecting down into the water, uh, and that's pretty cool. Obviously, uh, pay attention to the color changes between the lights. I'll get into that more in a minute, um, but that's basic refra refraction of the water and the lights. Uh, the next thing I wanted to talk about was the reflection uh, onto the river. Um, so this is going to be... <clears throat> more of the stuff that you can't see more than just the lights I should say and then the actual river movement itself the movement of the river you can see come through actually in the light reflection that's kind of how they tie in uh, you can see the movement in the blue and even in the whitish yellow lights uh, there's movement in the river obviously it's a river it's gonna flow uh, but I think that's really interesting how you can actually see the movement. The light kind of gives away the movement and that distorts the light to make it a crystal clear reflection. If you were to use like a still pond or still lake, you would obviously get a crystal clear reflection of whatever is 
in front of it. Uh, but since a river is a moving body of water, you will not ever get a clear reflection. It will always be slightly distorted because of the movement. And now getting to the color of the lighting. Um, I mentioned this earlier. The color of the lighting is going to be due to the pigments. Uh, the PNC Park has a lot of blue pigments making the light come out as blue. We see it as blue. Whereas if you see these lights here are more of a white, they have more neutral pigments. And these lights have more of yellow pigments, so they come out yellow. Um, you can see this light kind of reflects. I think that's a hotel sign. Kind of reflects down here. More of like a pinkish red, and it blends into the blue to make like a kind of violetish. Um, that's because the red pigments reflecting onto the river. Um, and even here you can see more just yellow and white. So that's that's kind of what controls the color of the lighting is going to be the pigments. And then obviously mixed in with the reflections I mentioned earlier. And the movement of the water is how you were able to get this piece the way it is. I like this one. Uh, it's simplistic. I probably would have done a better job focusing it, taking it. But I'm happy overall with how it was.